This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at electron shielding and effective nuclear charge. Electron shielding occurs when the inner shielding electrons shield the outer valence electrons from the full attraction of the nucleus. On the left, we have a diagram of an atom of potassium. Its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. So from this electron configuration, we can see that potassium has four occupied main energy levels with one valence electron. The electrons in the first three main energy levels, so that's n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3, are known as shielding electrons. These electrons shield the valence electron from the full attraction of the nucleus. Because of this shielding effect, the valence electrons within an atom require less energy to remove than the inner electrons. Next we look at the trend in electron shielding across a period and down a group in the periodic table. So starting with across a period, electron shielding remains constant across a period from left to right. Here we have the electron configurations for all the elements in period 3, from sodium to argon. If we highlight the shielding electrons within each atom, we can see that the number of shielding electrons remains the same for each element. So the shielding electrons are the electrons in the first main energy level and the second main energy level. The valence electrons are found in the third main energy level. Because of this, the electron shielding remains constant across a period from left to right. Next we look at the trend down a group. So electron shielding increases down a group. Here we have the electron configurations for four elements in group 1. That's lithium, sodium, potassium and rubidium. If we highlight the shielding electrons within each atom, we can see that the number of shielding electrons increases down the group as the number of occupied main energy levels increases. So lithium with its two occupied main energy levels has the lowest amount of electron shielding. And rubidium with its five occupied main energy levels has the greatest amount of electron shielding. Next we look at effective nuclear charge. Effective nuclear charge is the net positive charge experienced by valence electrons. So here we have an equation which can be used to calculate the effective nuclear charge of an atom. So the effective nuclear charge is equal to the atomic number, which is the number of protons in a nucleus, minus the number of shielding electrons in the atom. The effective nuclear charge increases across a period from left to right. Once again, here we have the electron configurations of the elements in period 3 from sodium to argon and here we can see the highlighted shielding electrons. So if we calculate the effective nuclear charge for each element, we can see that as we go across a period, the effective nuclear charge increases by one, until it reaches its maximum, which is for the group 18 element argon. This increase in effective nuclear charge is one of the reasons why the ionization energy increases across a period from left to right. Next, we look at the effective nuclear charge down a group. So the effective nuclear charge remains the same down a group in the periodic table. Once again, we have the electron configurations of the first four elements in group one. If we calculate the effective nuclear charge, we can see that it remains the same down the group. Although the effective nuclear charge stays the same down the group, the ionization energy decreases due to the increase in atomic radius. So let's end with a summary. Electron shielding occurs when the inner shielding electrons shield the outer valence electrons from the full attraction of the nucleus. Electron shielding remains the same across a period left to right and increases down a group. Effective nuclear charge is the net positive charge felt by the valence electrons. It increases across a period left to right and remains the same down a group. So that's all for this video. If you found this video helpful, Check out my other videos on my website at www.msjchem.com.